Hello, the Internet. A few weeks ago, I put together a tutorial on the basic controls in the atomic particles effect of HitFilm 2 Ultimate. This time around, I want to look at this effect again, progressing into another concept, that of creating ribbons. So here I'm starting with a plane, to which I have added a color gradient, and now we'll add our atomic particles effect. Okay, in the number of particles, it's very easy to control the number of particles on the X and Y axis. And really, making ribbons is as simple as setting one axis really low while leaving the other one very high. So here, now we have these lines there. And to make these more solid, we can go into the particle appearance and just increase the size. I'll go to about 15. And now we have these nice solid lines. You'll notice the edges are a bit rough. That's due to the size random and opacity random sliders. So you can leave them as is if you like it that way. Or if you want to keep things even, you can just zero those controls out. Let's make things a bit more interesting now. First, open the scale controls. And let's decrease the Y scale to jam all these ribbons closer together. So in the scale, let's set the Y to 0.2. Then crank up the twist a bit between one and a half and two rotations somewhere, whatever you like. This is pretty cool, but you'll notice, because of the nifty gradient I added, that these don't quite overlap the way they should. This purple ribbon is always in the front, even when it should be twisting around behind the green ones. But the depth sort menu comes into play here. Properly layering all of the atomic particles into 3D space is a lot more processor intensive so in cases where it doesn't really matter, leaving depth sorting off can help to speed things up. But when it does matter in cases like this, you can turn depth sorting on, and now we get accurate 3D depth to the effect. Now, just to make this a little more fun, let's turn up the displace strength a bit. That's in the fractal controls. So the displace strength, we'll just turn that up. I'm going to go to about 130, somewhere in there to get some randomness to those lines, and then set the speed to zero, and that'll just stop the effect moving around as the timeline plays. Now, we'll go back into the position controls and bring this whole effect into proper 3D space. So to do that, we'll create a point, convert that point to 3D, and then double-click Atomic Particle to reopen its controls, and in the position, transform from our new point. Now we can grab that point, and we'll rotate that around the y-axis, and you can see that now that effect is all 3 d ified and awesome. Suppose we want to grow these ribbons so that they gradually get longer. Well, this is actually quite simple. Because the effect originated as a plane, we can just use a mask to reveal the plane and create that animation. So disable the atomic particles for right now, so we can see our plane again. And then we're just going to select the rectangular mask and draw a mask that's just big enough to contain the entire plane. Okay, just like that. Now we can advance to the point where we want the whole frame to be visible. I'm going to go to the 10 second mark. And then in the controls for that mask, enable keyframing for the path. Now jump back to frame 0. Grab the selection tool and we're just going to drag that mask off the frame. So now we can play that back and you'll see that gradually that plane is being revealed. Now if we enable the atomic particles again and hit play, you can see how we very quickly created some cool growth into that effect. How cool is that? Let's add a little animation to the camera now. We'll go to the beginning. We want to see where those particles are at. And then in the camera, we'll enable keyframing for the position. Then we'll jump forward again to the 10 second mark and just reposition this camera and move it over a bit there so that the end of these ribbons is still in frame. And now when we play that back, the camera tracking along with the end of these particles or of these ribbons we've created as they grow out. Now, if someone would just attach that effect to a gun and add in some dubstep, that would be genius. Now, go out and start experimenting with ribbons and atomic particles yourself. And as you do, here are a few ideas that you could play with. You might try keyframing the disperse strength. 
maybe starting wide and then narrowing it down so that the effect kind of gradually comes together and resolves as it progresses. Try increasing the number of particles on the z-axis, or maybe keyframing the display strength or the wavelength or any of the other fractal properties. So, I'll leave you to experiment with those ideas and end this tutorial here. The next time we look at atomic particles, we'll delve into the spherical warp controls to create entirely different results. I'm Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and thanks very much for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, because we've got some tutorials in the works right now that you won't want to miss.